married to Otto Fladden, widowed and married Walter Lazar. So I am Elizabeth Edwards Treat Fladding Lazar, and I am the matriarch of this family now because all the rest of my, the ones that were bigger than me are not here now, so I get to be the big one. And I get to be the boss. And she's 88 years old. I was born in Tucson, Arizona, eight generation family. What, what year? And I was born on March the 2nd, 1899. 1899, kids. So I am now 88 years old. And if anybody is any older, let me know. Anybody here? No? You're twice my age. I'm 44. <laughs> yeah. Does well, how we feel have anything to do with age? Yeah, maybe we could run a close contest with that. Okay. Well, that's great. So we'd like to welcome all of you to our official family home evening for the Stratton Family Reunion. What is today? July 9th, 1987. The 12th, no, it's the 12th, 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 12th,
and she could have done some of these. And this, was, and this was an old piano stool cover, yeah. piano bench cover. Yeah. You can see it's quite stained. And these are uh, uh, two ribbons that are, these are put on here. I would say if you girls would all do something like that and pass it down, when you are dead and buried a hundred years, and all your grand great grandkids would be going, ooh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the little bodice that the uh, part of the dress that that. She looks like either was making or had made and it had torn apart. She was tiny. But look how tiny she was. Is there anyone that's... That almost would be Lizzie's side, I think. The, you'll have to see the hand stitching on this and how beautifully done it was. Just uh, show me the hand stitching, Meg, so I can get up close. No, that's okay. Just sit, just sit where you are, but show me. <laughs> show me where the hand stitching is. Well, you can you can see all the buttonholes are hand butt or hand uh, sewn. All of the stitches inside. Wow. Well, now Everybody some of the, they did have a sewing thing. machine. They had one of the first sewing machines in the what whole territory, that? and so this was uh, stitched on a sewing machine. But the hand All the people in that time period were small. If you go to museums, mm -hmm. well, they had to be because they corseted them in very tight, and they had to have very small waistlines to be in to be a chic. The in fashion. <laughs> but their shoes were all a little tiny, you know, like this. And even men's shoes, the, men, the men, biggest men's shoes you find the back in the 1800s were a size tiny. 8, size 8. Well, now we're healthier, we live longer. Most people died at 40, 57 or 40, something yeah, like that. Was the, picture was the life of her uh, mother. She's the one right here in this picture, and of course, she's in these pictures too. You may even. Um, now, is this their grandma? This is my this mother. Time. Your mother. This is, this is your mother. On this side is, is my mother. But uh, these, this is a, her sister and uh, my father's sister. Those are two aunts. From, and uh, this, this is at my grandmother's home, but I cannot tell you the people in it. would be your great, great. As she was married. Who was that? And this is Margaret Hughes Treat. Her tree great grandmother, the one that did all the artwork. Yeah. Uh, she this she was mother. my mother. She was the mother of, of Margaret, your uh, Pat's mother, uh, your your grandmother. She was my grandmother. I mean, of course, they would have a um, they would have had a kind of a comb back here that would have held this up like this, so that when she had it around on her like this, it would I can't see what it's doing here, but she would have this kind of puffed up here because she would have a, a comb on it. This is a Margaret Frances Hughes treat. Mantia, wedding Mantia, and Megs used it when she got married, and it was 103 years old when she wore it. Mm -hmm. You've been married how long? And we've been married, Gerald, how long? Oh. 17 years, almost 17 years. 16. 16. 20 years old. 18 years. So that man T is 123 years old. That I brought, that I was, that's what I've been looking for. Um, and when I find it, I will give it to the head of each. This, this, I will give it to the head of each household. Uh, Margaret Francis Hughes Tree, who uh, we've been talking about, she. Uh, did beautiful embroidery work, and also she had these beautiful doilies that she made. And I have the, uh, a full set of them, and I, I have, I put, I, I, boy, I wish I could find those. They're in the house somewhere. If anybody finds a sack that has some aqua colored fabric in it, it so these picture frames are wrapped up in it, and the picture frames has a, a kind of a maroon magenta. Uh, background of, of velvet, and this velvet, this velvet was velvet that was that your uh, my grandmother Margaret Black used in her jewelry store windows to display the diamonds and the watches. And I would go there in the summer, and I would be my favorite thing to do would be to uh, redo her window and put all these beautiful velvet and the diamonds and everything on it. And so she, uh, mother gave me some of that velvet, and so I cut out that for the background.
So the velvet is from your Grandma Black's uh, windows from her jewelry store. And then the beautiful white doily is the doily that was made uh, by Margaret Francis Hughes Treat, by, by, by Grandma's mother, my grandma's mother. And here's a, a napkin ring that says Maggie on it that was, was, was whose? Well, that was my, my mother. Yes, this is the same woman that we're talking about. Okay, listen, Grandma's Tell us the story. My, my grandfather and grandmother, my mother and father, and uh, my sister and I, and my Aunt Sis and her husband, Uncle Slim, we all went, uh, we all, they all went fishing. We went to Greer where we all went lesson. The, the men went out to go fishing in one of the Greer lakes. But. Bunch but. Lake. They got about 50 feet from the shore and remembered they hadn't got their worms. So my Uncle Slim, without thinking, stood up in the boat, it capsized, and my father's foot was under the seat and caught. And everybody said, go get Grandpa, swim out and get Grandpa, because he had a stroke and he couldn't swim, he was paralyzed on that side. So everybody went to get Grandpa and save his life. And my mother knew that my dad couldn't swim, so she went out to find my dad. She couldn't find him, and he had his foot underneath the boat. And so she dived down and dived down, and she got him loose and brought him in. And she had that watch on. She went in clothes and all, went and saved my father's life. And when he got his, he, she said, girls, get this water out of your bed. And she had my sister pump one leg, and I pump one leg, and she had my aunt sis run and get a doctor and somebody else. And Uncle Sam hold his tongue and somebody else. Put him on a rock and roll him and get the water out of his And she saved his life. Who has the watch? Show me Cliff. Right? Cliff the watch. That was your dad that had it. It had, it had diamonds in it. My mother saved my grandma. My father. Your, gra your father? Yeah. So mom and dad, right? My mom and dad. Say the grand cluster. Bring your keys. Bring your covenants. Seek from his blessings of the priesthood.
a very wonderful background and following our background that I am an age from, I see all these beautiful faces that are going to keep our heritage living forever and ever. You are going to be the mothers and fathers of our future generations. But I would like you to know something about your generations. And if you will bear with me, I will try to give you a little history of our lives. In uh, that first picture of my mother and father, my mother was a uh, child of the very famous and renowned pioneer Arizonian Samuel and Adonisha Hughes. My mother was Margaret Francis, and she had, uh, in 1889, she married Frank Shrewsbury Treat. Frank Shrewsbury Treat was born and raised in Atchison, Kansas, and came to Arizona as a young man about 18 or 19 on a cattle train because he had just got out of school and was looking for a, a future. And he found his future in Arizona, and he found the best part of the future was this very beautiful and lovely Margaret Francis, whom we know as Maggie Hughes. Maggie and father were married very, very, uh, I didn't mean to say that. They were married one very early morning by chance. Father was uh, on his way uh, on a cattle train, taking cattle from Arizona back to wherever, Missouri or Kansas. And when he got to the little town of Wilcox, the cattle had to be taken off the train to be watered. And he began to get worried quite worried about his, uh, uh, his little friend that he left behind. Uh, this gentleman in this picture, whose name was Van Curen, and he didn't like it because he was kind of sweet on this Margaret. So he decided, while the cattle were watering, he would hike on a freight train back to Tucson, where they were, and he arrived about 5 o'clock in the morning at my grandmother's home, and he woke, woke them all up and he said, I brought the preacher, we're getting married. <laughs> and he got married, and then he left and went back to his cattle train and on his way, but he left his little bride married so Van Curen couldn't feed his time. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Margaret and Frank Treat my mother and father, and because of them, they had, I've got these mixed up now, the seven children are in this picture, and uh, this little picture was taken in 1904, and the background is our home that my grandparents gave to my parents after father came back, and then they really had a marriage. And uh, so uh, this is how the Treat family began. And uh, the t in this picture uh, was taken at the same time of my mother's death in 1904. And this is the little family that she left. And. Uh, I'll tell you their names, then we'll pass it around. Okay, point to them and give, show us their names. Uh, point to them on the picture and give us their names. I'll hold it while hold you Hold it point. right there, I had it. Oh. That's now perfect. You, now you point, okay. The man in the background, uh, this is on a bicycle. The man in the background was a friend of my father's from Atchison, Kansas. that had come to the funeral and his name was Luther Higby. But then on, not on his shoulder, was the second child from the youngest, Ted, known as Ted, but he was Theodore Cooper. And then 
sitting right up here with his hair right straight back and blonde is your grandmother, Margaret Treat. And then sitting next to her is the one that we have known as Aunt Sister. She was named Adonisha from uh, her grandmother. Our grandmother was Adonisha. So this is, but she never went by Adonisha. It was always Aunt Sis. And so then, of course, this beautiful little child with the hair bow has to be me. <laughs> and uh, this is Brother Frank, who was just a year older than me. And this is our baby, who is Dick. He was Richard Garrier, but he was always known as Dick. And so these are the children of the two of the treats. It was, uh, and this, of course, then is a later picture of Father, as I remember him. Aunt Sis used to always tease us. He was quite a quite a figure around there, and he was very dashing and very handsome. And he moved then. To Benson because he went, he had a good friend that was a Republican, and he and the Republican both ran for the same office, and the Republican won. And Father decided that it was time for him to get out of politics, so he moved to the little town of Benson, where about 900 people, counting the cats and the dogs, and all the little Mexicans and the little Indians and the little Chinese people all lived. And this is where we made our home, was in Benson, Arizona. What year was in that? 1909. And this is 1909, when Father moved to Benson. And, uh, and uh, this is a, a panoramic picture of Benson. And uh, this is our home in Benson. And then your mother, I mean, your grandmother, Margaret Black, inherited this one on his death. And this is the home now, and she sold it to some people by the name of Gardner. She still lived there, and this is the home as it is now. And uh, on the other side is, an, is one of my uncles, but you can't tell much about him. And this picture is a picture of the first white-faced Herefords introduced into the state of Arizona. And this is a picture out at the ranch, and they were all uh, uh, celebrating the arrival of the cattle that he brought in. And uh, uh, it had received them very well. But Father is, is standing here in the foreground. And then there is a lady in the picture holding an infant, and that is my sister Mabel, who is the oldest in our family. And uh, so this is a very prized a historical picture because of the of that. The white not, faced Herefords are the brown ones, kids. Uh, the white faces that you see a lot of the branches around. Now. Well, th these uh, th this was this was taken now. They call it out at the Tortolitas, which are mountains out there. And um, then on the opposite side of this is a picture of uh, of the Sam Hughes home and Grandfather Hughes, and my sister Mabel. I have a sister Mabel, and incidentally, if I take time to tell you, she is now 96 years old, and she lives in uh, Quantico, Virginia. Or really, she lives in a town called Triangle, which is right outside of, Tri of Quantico. So that is Mabel. And Mabel was the first child in the Creek family. Now, a little story of uh, my father and my mother and uh, this same Mrs. Higby. They were friends that used to come and visit us periodically. Well, they used to come and they used to take a lot of pictures. And so this is father and Mrs. Higby. And in the back, peeking over daddy, is uh, my mother, Margaret Frances Hughes. And uh, then behind Daddy is my sister Addie, or Aunt Sis, and the front is the baby, and that's my brother Frank. And this was taken before I was born. So, and then there's a little picture here of a child. This was Mother's uh, third child, and his name was Tommy. And when he was two years old, he uh, he contracted diphtheria. 
and died. And his, uh, my mother was at that time carrying your grandmother, and uh, she had uh, had diphtheria following this. So and, this is Tommy, who died. Can you explain to him what diphtheria yeah. is? Diphtheria is a was a contagious, a very contagious disease that is no longer. Uh, however, I recently heard a child had it. It was a, some type of a, of a disease to the throat. I'm not, I don't know too much about it, but uh, your grandmother always had, they said she, she was a germ carrier. But she had it, I think she had it at least twice during her lifetime when she was small. Don't you turn black? I had, I had diphtheria when I was a kid, when and, I was a sophomore in high school. You can't and see this picture. That this is Daddy and Ted. Just a minute, let Oh, I, had, I had diphtheria when I was a sophomore in high school, and my very best friend had it too. We uh, went up to the little town of Delta, which had been quarantined. The whole town has been quarantined. Now, the, I'm telling you about the tree family, but I would like now to tell you the background of the tree and the Hughes marriage. So, my mother was uh, Margaret Hughes. And my mother's father and mother were Sam and Adam Asher Hughes. Now, of course, I don't have to explain that to Clifford Stratton over here, and uh, his family probably knows more about it than I do. But anyway, our grandfather came into the area, into the Tucson area, uh, in the about the year of. Um, uh, not 1855 or 6. That's I think. 10 years before the Civil War started. Does that give you an idea of when it was? Arizona. Arizona was at the time prior to 18, uh, 1854. Arizona was a portion of, of Mexico, and in 1854, the uh, uh, the United States bought the territory from Mexico to make the state of Arizona. And uh, so my grandmother, though, was born in Mexico in 1850, and her name was this Adonisha Hughes, Adonisha Santa Cruz Hughes. And Adonisha and my grandfather, Samuel Hughes, married at the Santa Vera Mission, and uh, our background, and I will tell you this, that you are a family of eight generations born in the state of Arizona, considering that uh, grandmother was born actually in Mexico, but was the Arizona. Yes, it was the Santa Vera Mission. And uh, I, I have so grandfather Sam Hughes was a very famous man, and uh, and uh, he was married to Adonisha, and this is a picture of two of his sons, Dave and Sam, and uh, in that one picture with my mother was a, was a picture of uh, my mother and Dave and Sam. And, uh, and here's another picture, of Sam Hughes. You might tell them that. Uh, well, I will. Uh, there's a school down in, tu in Tucson. It's the Hughes School. Samuel Hughes School. And you walk and in the front door, and this whole picture is over the whole wall. And I'll have you know that my mother painted that. No, she didn't paint that one. The one that my mother painted of him is uh, in the uh, Masonic Hall in Tucson. This is. Uh, mother with her two brothers, Sam and Dave, and they were the two first children, but don't waste any time thinking that they were spoiled because they were the sisters and brothers of not ten, but fifteen children. And my mother was the second child of the family. And Sam and Dave. You kids know whenever she says my mother, that's your great grandmother she's talking about. Yes, I'm talking See, about Margaret Hughes. Mother, no, uh -huh. In the picture, it looks like um, your mother is the oldest in that picture. My mother. 
mother. See, I, I'm talking about my mother, but she also is the mother of Margaret Black. Of my mother. Of Pat's mother. Now this is Adonisha. This is a picture of Adonisha in her late years, and when she was around 80, I think, or 82. But in 19, they were married in 1862 in the Santa Fe Mission. But in uh, 1912, and that's a long time ago, they celebrated their 50th anniversary. And uh, this is a picture of uh, at that anniversary time. And in the picture is my grandmother and grandfather. And their first child is this lady also Lizzie, but she was not Elizabeth especially, she was, the Spanish pronunciation is Isabel, and so she liked Lizzie, so she had always went with Lizzie, and then this is Lizzie's daughter, and, um, and uh, this is Lizzie's husband who was J. Knox Corbett, and this is uh, the daughter's daughter, so this was one, two, three, Four generations. And the, Corbett, the Corbett's are very famous, rich people in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Well, they there's they quite a lot of. They home. Uh -huh. And their their home was there. Yeah. At, at this time in Tucson, they were uh, infested a great deal by the surrounding Apaches, and so security was uh, pretty pretty shaky. So the mission was the only place that they could go to be married because that was the only church in the area. And the mission was nine miles south of Tucson. So every periodically, probably like once a year or six months, the uh, people that wanted to be married got together and they formed a, a, a regular caravan. Uh, caravan. And then the soldiers took them to the mission, and they would spend the day there, and all the people would have their weddings one by one or however. And so this happened to my grandmother and grandfather. And my grandmother, Adonisha, was 13 years old, and, uh, and my grandfather, Sam Hughes, was 29 years old. She was 13 when she was married. Oh. Carrie, you're 13. Deborah, you're 13. Uh, this is a picture. It's like marrying somebody then, 29. You do. Uh, Uncle Chuck's age. Marrying somebody in Uncle Chuck's age. In Arizona. She was, uh, uh, she was the mother of everybody. Now, Tom was a brother of Sam Hughes. And Tom uh, had a family of nine children. The first and the last were girls and seven boys. And uh, the mother was killed in an accident when the baby was just three months old and she was the age of my sister Addie. Well, Aunt Annie took those little children and raised them. And uh, she was a, just a very normal lady that I don't know where or how but she raised those children, and then the father got killed, so she took them all over, and each one of those nine children were college educated. And they were, each one sent to school and made their way because of her. But she had a big home, and because she didn't, she wasn't married, all of the children and I'm speaking of all the grandchildren, like all of you would be, you know. Everybody went to Aunt Annie because Aunt Annie was the, was the, the one person that everybody loved because when they didn't get along at home or when things went wrong, it was always Aunt Addie that ironed everything out. And then as she got older, she used to take in the little Mexican children because she lived in a little Mexican area and they had a, what they call a barrio libre, which is a, the poor, you know, part of the town and all these little poor little Mexican children. She lived right near the school. So she gathered them all up at noon and fed them their lunches every day. She cooked lunches for 
maybe 50 or 40 kids. And then uh, as time went on, she adopted different children. And she didn't really adopt them legally, but she was like a, mo a foster mother. And she took care of children. And then when she uh, was so old that she left to live in another home with her, uh, one of her children, she donated this to her home to what we call the Arizona Children's Home, which still exists in Tucson. However, it is not the same home now. They have a, a, a different home that they have built. But she donated this home to the Arizona Children's Home, which started the children's home for little foster children. And this was our Aunt Annie Hughes, and we loved her. She was a very precious and a very loving person, and very, very endearing. And uh, everybody used to go to Aunt Annie's. And on, on one day, on Saturdays, Sister and I used to go down there and stay all night because on Saturday, on Sunday morning, hot takes started to come up like this on the table, and it wasn't very long till the hot takes were down like this. <laughs> Ready? We have been born as he
the other side of the family. This is Grandpa Black's side, okay? This is his daddy and his mother. And the artifacts that I have, let me tell you the story. Albert Black was a salesman. He used to sell farm-type equipment. And he was away from home when uh, his wife, who had a baby, went out in, because she was cold, went out to get some coal. And she slipped on some coal out in the coal shed. And rather than hurt the baby, she twisted and fell and had the baby land on top of her. And as a result of that injury, she died a few days later. Okay, so Albert H. Black came back as quickly as he could. And, of course, his wife uh, was soon passed away thereafter. And he then, after, uh, after a while, married a woman named Rose McGuire, which is this woman here. You can't see that. Mom, probably. Okay. But Albert H. Black, this is his wedding ring here. And I'll pass this around. This is Albert H. Black's wedding ring that Elijah, that Elijah Jane Morrison gave him, I assume. Okay? And this is Rose McGuire's ring that she wore. Only someone ripped off the stone. <laughs> okay? But this is the this is the wedding ring. And so we'll pass these around for everybody to take a look at. That's my father and grandfather. Black. This is, My name is Black. Black. This is this is that's that's Mama's gra uh, grandpa, right? You told me, your son, you're gonna meet a lot of girls down there, and he says you go with them and have fun and everything else. But when you get ready to get married, he says, I want you to come back to Utah and get your little Mormon girl and marry her. And uh, well, you can imagine how I felt, but I, was, I got married down here and I took uh, your grandmother up to, uh, to meet my parents and uh, walked in the door and, well, uh, I'll make the story good. Uh, Dad <laughs> wasn't, true, Dad good. wasn't home yeah, when uh, we... Uh, got there, and Patricia Francis Black Stratton was in the kitchen with, with my mother when Dad came home. And I met him at the front door and uh, came in the house and uh, just then why, uh, just before, just before uh, Grandma, your great-grandmother, and, uh, and your mother, your grandmother, came in the, from the kitchen. Why, well, I told Dad, I said, you remember, you told me when I went to Arizona to be sure to come back and marry a good little Mormon girl? And uh, he said, yes. I said, well, I'm sorry, Dad, but I've married a black girl. <laughs> and his face kind of turned a little good. Funny, you know, and, and, uh, he was followed a couple of times, and about that time, what, well, in came Mom and, and uh, Grandma, and uh, he took one look at her, and, and he just gathered her up in his arms. And, and, he was so glad I wasn't a black girl. <laughs> <laughs> he loved you forever, didn't he? <laughs>
As for tonight, because they're the ones who started this whole thing, okay, a and few their years ago. Is in a couple weeks. And their anniversary is in a couple of weeks, and their birthday is in about a month, each of them. August and uh, July. July. In fact, mom was just real soon. So we got them a present from each of the kids, which is all of the kids and grandkids. And uh, we all know that dad needs this real bad. So we'll let dad open his first. carry a lot of junk, I mean extra things with the scriptures. So he has the big section here where he carries his sticks, and he has another equally big section over here where he can put all of his uh, notes on uh, blood atonement, Mountain Meadows Massacre, and those, those kinds of things. So that's, so that's Grandpa's present from his kids. And you did the leather Yeah, me, uh, me and my boys did the leather work on that. That's an old, that's an old uh, diamond stack, uh, 242 engine. And nobody has that, that uh, pattern on their thing because we had to go to the Phoenix Library and I took some of Marsha's brother-in-law's, son-in-law's, and uh, we went and found that and then we, we reduced it down so that is unique. You're the only one to have that pattern exactly from that train. That's the real thing. We got that out of an old history book. I'm well, sure that's the real thing. In the two Phoenix four Library. 242. Two, uh, two wheels out in front. Four. Four drivers. And then two trailing wheels. The old diamond stack. I've only seen, I think I've only seen one of them in my life. And it also I'm says, read what it says up there up above on top. Bishop Clifford Strat. To remind him that he's still a bishop at heart. <laughs> Once a bishop, always a bishop. Who did that work on it? The boys did. Oh, my voice. Oh, that makes it very special. And it also has a, a, a pocket up here, Grandpa, in case you don't. The other pocket isn't big enough. To. Another one here? Oh. Hey, now I can get it all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and we have something special for Grandma. If you look around, see these? Grandma loves brass swans. swans. And look up there on the mantle. She and loves. And in the other room, and behind Uncle Jerry, there's some brass swans. I defy you to look anywhere in this house without seeing a swan. Okay, but she loves brass swans especially. And we looked everywhere. We found one of these. There was one of these in all of the Phoenix Mesa Tempe area. I want to give this to Mom. That doesn't say that it's swamped, but it's... <laughs> oh, how gorgeous. It's a, it's a music box, wind it up, and it, it, it uh, plays Swan Lake. So 
you'll always remember our reunion, 1987. Okay. Father Kino, get it started. Father one, busy ones, and it's just movie chillies. What are your girlfriends? Oh, what are your girlfriends in Reno? Said that she, pro that she promised that she would call you this week. Been trying to find you. Whoa, Clifford! Who, me? I want yours. Yours look a lot better than mine. But I don't have one. Than that, I think. Oh, <laughs> Turn this thing 